And welcome back to the uh, Steve Ballsberg Show. And joining us, uh, it's been a while, too long, uh, is our friend Ralph Peters, best-selling author. His latest book is Hell or Richmond, um, a Civil War um, novel. And, uh, of, of course, he's also Fox News strategic analyst. Hey, Ralph, how are you? Well, I'm great, Steve, and uh, always glad to talk to you. Well, we go back a long way, and uh, unfortunately what we saw uh, over the weekend, actually until today and even now, uh, they say it's over, but uh, there might be pockets of, uh, of resistance uh, inside that mall in Kenya. Um, what were you thinking when you were watching all of this unfold? Well, inevitable. Uh, it surprised me that there haven't been such attacks or similar attacks or at least long gun terrorist attacks against American shopping malls. Um, it's, I, uh, oh, even before 9-11, I was concerned about attacks on shopping malls. They're so obvious because they're uh, symbols of luxurious consumption and, and they're impossible to defend. Uh, and so I wasn't surprised by the attack. Um, I was a bit surprised by the, the planning, the scale, the professionalism of it. Um, they clearly did their homework planned it out, uh, planned what they would do, how they would do it. It appears that instead of doing the bozo thing, grabbing hostages and holding up somewhere, that they had teams that took groups of hostages to different parts of the malls. I mean, that's what it looks like at this point. Right. And we had to wait to see what the facts come out to be. Obviously, we're getting reports of international actors. So that's the bad news. It was a sophisticated attack. But it's always important to put things in perspective. Now, this doesn't tell us that al-Shabaab is getting stronger. Al-Shabaab was at its strongest a few years ago when it was running Somalia, basically, or the southern half of Somalia. Al-Shabaab, uh, the, the Somali affiliate of al-Qaeda, um, which they joined uh, a little while ago, um, they are Islamist extremists um, who um, have been just taken a beating. The people of Somalia decided they didn't like them. African Union saying peacekeepers, or actually peacemakers, uh, we've been using drones. And Al-Shabaab was driven out of the major cities, uh, obviously Mogadishu, out of Kismayu, and they were very much on the defensive. But they had to do something to reestablish their street cred, bring in more recruits, bring in donations. So it's the Hail Mary pass. This well-executed attack was is al-Qaeda trying to get back on its feet and also trying to punish Kenya, as they previously did with an attack in Uganda, for sending uh, peacemaking troops and for peace enforcement troops into Somalia. Now, in the even broader perspective, and this is something I've been trying with home to people since the 1990s, and Washington doesn't want to hear it, because Washington, the Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. They engage in magical thinking that if we just wish hard enough, problems will go away, or if we close our eyes, problems will go away. Look, Islamist terrorism, primarily Sunni but also Shia, is going to be with us throughout our lifetimes. It will not be with us because of anything we have done or left undone. It will be with us because of the societal, economic, and spiritual incompetence uh, of the, the greater Middle East. I mean, the world's most broken area of civilization is that of Middle Eastern Islam, and you, you can't get around it. Now, that doesn't mean that Arabs are inferior. Of course they're not. Arabs come to the United States or Canada, and they thrive in our environment. It's an environmental problem. The broken societies of the Middle East are utterly dysfunctional. Steve, this is a, a, an entire civilization out of the Arab Middle East and into Iran that in the 21st century not only cannot build a competitive automobile, they can't build a competitive bicycle. Uh, the repressive societies, horrible, and now thanks to the information age, people within those societies know there are alternatives. So you have some people want to modernize their societies, others are fearful of change, fearful of modernity, they join Al-Qaeda, or farther to the east, the Taliban, Haqqani Network, or in Af Africa, Al-Shabaab, or Boko Haram in Nigeria. And there is within the Islamic world of the greater Middle East a titanic, multi-layered civil war. On one level, it's Sunni versus Shia. But on an even more profound level, it's the, the 
good old-time religion folks, the al-Qaeda types, the, the severe backward-looking folks, versus those who desperately want to modernize their societies. And, of course, minorities, Christians and others, get absolutely screwed uh, by both sides, uh, Sunni and Shia. So, at any rate, this, the civilization of the Middle East is outside of Israel, of course. Israel is a great exception. The civilization of the Middle East is so utterly broken that it, even if it is fixable, it will not be fixed within our lifetimes, and these terrorists will be with us. Now, the bottom line is this, and this is what nobody wants to hear because it's painful. The only way to deal with, relig- with violent religious fanatics is to kill them. 2,000 years of history of fanatical religion-driven insurgencies show us one lesson without a single exception in 2,000 years. They cannot be quelled by negotiations. They cannot be quelled by compromise or palliative measures. You have to kill them. And you have to keep on killing them. It's, it's not an over, a once-and-done thing. They're going to be gen- Middle East is going to be generating, ter- generating terrorists for a long time to come. And we need to choose our fights, obviously. You take on the terrorists that are threatening us. If they're in their own sandbox, that's uh, the local problem. Uh, but we're not going to, there's no way to escape this problem fully, and that's the bad news. We are in a long struggle. That's, we're peripheral to the struggle. It's about the Middle East's own failures, but we become a target of opportunity at times. Yeah, we're talking to Ralph Peters here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Um, fascinating uh, insight into uh, into the overall problem. I do want to go back to something you talked about and the, uh, the the sophistication of the attack, and notwithstanding what you said about the fact that you don't believe this shows that Al Shabaab is uh, is peaking or getting stronger. Uh, in fact, uh, you you you, you, uh, you your analysis indicates that they had peaked uh, a bit earlier. What what does it say uh, uh, for us here? In other words, we're you know we're full of soft targets, and and like you and like others, you know, ever since 9/11, at least I've I've been wondering, God forbid, when that's going to happen here and why it hasn't. Do you think that this sends any kind of uh, signal uh, that uh, you know we need to? Uh, I, I don't know how, but uh, heighten our security at soft targets or be more aware than we already are. Yeah, well, we we can't protect every shopping mall with uh, you know with. Uh basically TSA type measures. Uh, what you have to do, and the FBI has done a pretty good job of it, uh, along with other agencies, you have to act pre- preventively and preemptively. Now, the thing to worry about for us, and, and others have said this, this isn't just me saying it, um, is the renegades who join al-Qaeda or the Taliban get trained and then come back. Uh, the ones who have experience of jihad and come back here because they have U.S. passports, uh, or the ones who are self-radicalizing, the major Hassans, obviously, the uh, um, Janaya brothers in, in the Boston area. Um, but that said, now here's another important point. It, it, it speaks very well of America as a land of opportunity and promise, that we haven't seen more domestic attacks, frankly, because... Middle Easterners and other Muslims come to the United States, and they do have real opportunities. The great majority of Muslim Americans are law-abiding citizens who want better lives. And although there are plenty of bad apples, are there, as there are in every community, and the, the Muslim American community is riven and somewhat torn, nonetheless, they, the great majority want no part of terrorism. Right. Now, we have a problem with some extremists are sending money to the Taliban or al-Shabaab. There are going to be bad apples. You've got to weed them out. The great mistake that the American government has made, both the Bush administration and the Obama administration, has been pandering to the extreme voices with the, in the Muslim American community, like CAIR, CARE, and, and others. Uh, we should be concentrating on supporting um, and hearing the voices of the true moderates, the ones who want to be good Americans, not the ones who want America to conform to their values. And a problem we have with some of the immigrant groups today, and most notably the Somalis, who are very hard to assimilate uh, in, in Minnesota and elsewhere, is that uh, American leftists, you know, meaning well and softies, have lost the basic message for all immigrants that we don't conform to the immigrants' culture. If the immigrant wants to come here, they conform to our culture. Right. And there's no other way to do it. Yeah. Hey, Ralph, fascinating uh, conversation. Fascinating listening to you, as always. I thank you for your time, sir. 
My pleasure, Steve. Ralph Peters, ladies and gentlemen. Read his great uh, uh, Civil War novel, uh, just a, a, an award-winning uh, author, uh, Hell or Richmond. And, of course, watch him on the Fox News channel where he is a uh, uh, Fox News strategic analyst. All right, that's uh, a lot of uh, a lot of food for thought right there. And uh, 855-777-9660 if you want to weigh in right here. Coming back, Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Malsberg Show. Are you at least 62 years old like me? Could you use an extra fifty, dollars $100,000 or more to live a better life? Then please consider the benefits a reverse mortgage can provide to you. With a reverse mortgage, you can have your mortgage payments stopped altogether and get equity out of your home to live on. And you can use the money to help you live a better life. How nice would that be not to have a mortgage payment? Qualifying for a reverse mortgage is simple, since there are no income, asset, employment, or credit requirements. However, you must be 62 years or older, own your home outright, or have a very low balance on the mortgage, and be prepared to live in it throughout the rest of the loan. Call now for more information. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. Eight hundred eight three one fifteen sixty. That's eight hundred eight three one fifteen sixty. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone, like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call a place for mom the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? Yeah. They found me a place for what she could afford and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe and they just helped every step of the way and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, Call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-908-1254, 800-908-1254. If you're a man over 40, your prostate could be forcing you to urinate frequently, even disrupting your sleep multiple times each night. You're not alone. Over half of men over 40 experience age-related prostate concerns. Fortunately, prominent medical doctor David Brownstein believes that aging prostate concerns are not inevitable. That's why Dr. Brownstein developed Prostate Revive, an advanced dietary supplement containing a unique blend of 15 ingredients designed to promote optimal prostate health. So men, as part of this new radio promotion, you now have the opportunity to claim your own 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, containing Saul Palmetto, Beta Cytosterol, and numerous other prostate helpers. Just cover a $4.95 shipping and handling charge. Plus, if you act now, you'll also get a doctor's guide to a healthy prostate as a bonus gift. Please visit ProstateRevive.com radio for details on getting your 30-day supply of Prostate Revive and free report. That's ProstateRevive.com radio. Do something about those annoying age-related prostate concerns. Visit ProstateRevive.com com slash radio now while supplies last. Did you know that right now, some retail banks around the country are allowing people to exchange ordinary paper dollars for real holding your hand silver? That's right. You can walk into almost any ordinary bank in the U.S. Then after a short and free transaction, they might hand you a fistful of silver that's worth $50, maybe $100 or more. Anybody can do it. That's what amazed me. It doesn't take much to go in there and walk out with some silver. It's part of a weird transaction that very few people know about, but anyone can try this. You don't even need an account with the bank. A former Wall Street professional posted a free video online showing exactly how to do it. Just go to www.retirementsilver35.com and check it out. Keep in mind, this silver is disappearing fast. Over 2 million people have watched this video already. So check it out for free right now before the silver is all gone. Again, just go to retirementsilver35.com to watch the free video which details this exciting silver loophole. Drug, alcohol, and gambling addiction can be devastating for you and your loved ones. Don't let the disease of addiction ruin everything you've worked so hard for. The Treatment Helpline has helped thousands of people just like you take control of their addictions and live healthier, cleaner, and happier lives. You are not alone. Now there's hope. 
The Treatment Helpline has helped people just like you overcome their addiction. If you or a loved one is suffering from a drug, alcohol, or gambling addiction, let us help you today. Call 1-800-813-9821. Our seasoned addiction treatment professionals can show you how to use your private health insurance to help cover the costs of this life-changing program. Call now and get a free confidential consultation. 1-800-813-9821. That's 1-800-813-9821. Help is only a phone call away. Call 1-800-813-9821. That's 1-800-813-9821. Phones hot. Satellite link established. Studio lights illuminated. Cameras rolling. Audio and video encoders firing ones and zeros. Internet stream. Um, is streaming. The most technology advanced radio show is on the air. Here's the captain of this enterprise, Steve Malsberg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Steve Malsberg show final segment for today. Tomorrow on this show... Uh, Senator Rand Paul will be among our many guests. Also, uh, Charlie Hurt, uh, columnist extraordinaire for the Washington Times. Let me let me ask you a question. Let's play a little game here. Want to play a little game? All right, we'll play a little game. Um, who said this? Who said this in criticism of the President of the United States in the October issue of Playboy? Don't be Googling it in the control room. Um, telling the leader in the interview, to, quote, stop trying to relate to the public and be the effing president and be effing presidential. Stop trying to relate to the public and be effing presidential. Well, let's see. It must have been uh, Rush Limbaugh, right? Uh, some some right wing conservative nut job, right? No, no, no. Oh, it must have been some some uh, some white guy who just has a problem with a black man being in a White House. No, I don't think so. No, sorry about that. Samuel L. Jackson. Yep, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, after let's see, after ranting about the importance of good grammar. The interviewer asks the star what he thinks about President Obama or other highly educated Americans consciously drop, dropping off the ends of words to sound like Joe Average. Jackson replies, I'm just reading you what the story says. Jackson replies, first of all, we know it ain't because of his blackness, so I say stop trying to relate, be a leader, be effing presidential. Only I don't think he said effing. I think he said the word. The actor continues, look, I grew up in a society where I could say it ain't or what what it be to my friends. But when I'm out presenting myself to the world as me, who graduated from college, who had family, who cared about me, who has a well-read background, I effing conjugate. Apparently he has a fixation with a certain word. But he conjugates. Yes, and he does it with emphasis, apparently. Um, Anyway, Samuel L. Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Um, And some more on uh, on Barack Obama. Yes, indeed, some more on Barack Obama. Uh, Let me run this one by you. Okay. Um, Yesterday at the United Nations, in an unguarded moment, President Obama was caught on an open microphone. It was following a civil society roundtable at the opening of the United Nations General Assembly meeting, and they caught the president questioning UN Special Rapporteur Mina Kai about his smoking habit. And Obama says, I hope you quit smoking. Here's how it sounds, cut 25. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. I'll tell you, nigger. That's because I'm scared of my life. All right, very hard to hear. He says, no, no, no. I haven't had a cigarette in six years. I'm too scared of my wife. Six years. Now, um, and here's how it went. He said, I hope you, you quit smoking, Obama said. 
And Caillou said he still enjoyed his smoke from time to time and asked Obama if he had been able to kick the habit. I haven't had a cigarette in six years. That's because I'm scared of my wife, he said with a grin. Let's play it one more time now that people know what it is. They can listen for it. Cut 25. <laughs> All right, he's scared of his wife. Now, in a uh, 2012 interview with uh, uh, I Village, First Lady Michelle Obama said her husband had been motivated uh, by their daughters to successfully quit for good. Um, let's see. Okay, in 2009, he admitted he still struggled with cigarettes and has continued to smoke on occasion as president. So that was in 2009. We're now in 2013. By my calculations and my fingers, that's 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, that's four years, and depending where on the in the year in 2009, he said that he... Um, continues to struggle with cigarettes. That would be four years if he stopped right then that he hasn't had a cigarette. But he upped it to six years on this uh, microphone that he didn't know was open while speaking to uh, this uh, UN special rapporteur um, about his smoking habit. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, reluctantly, President Obama admits he still smokes, but is 95% cured. This was in June, June 23rd of 09. So figure he was still smoking four years ago now, right, occasionally. But he said in June of 2009, he still smokes. Yesterday he said he hasn't had a cigarette in six years. Not a big deal, but not true either. You know, just for the record, it's, 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 it's not true. Now, speaking of not true, I point you to the Daily Caller, ladies and gentlemen. And I point you to uh, the article by Josh Peterson on Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama has nearly 2 million fake Twitter followers. That's what it says here. According to the Twitter analytics application Status People, 37% of Michelle Obama's 5 and a quarter million Twitter followers or approximately almost 2 million of them, are considered fake. 35% of her followers are inactive. Wow. So 37%, which is almost 2 million, then another 35%, which is also an almost another 2 million. So almost 4 million of her 5 and a quarter million are either fake or inactive people on Twitter. And 25, 20, 28% are considered good or real. Michelle Obama's account is run by Organizing for Action and sent its last tweet on March 4th. That's what they say. It was a retweet of a message sent by uh, the Twitter account of the First Lady's Let's Move initiative. The official Twitter account for the Office of the First Lady is at FLOTUS, F-L-O-T-U-S, only 25% of the account's 513,000 followers are considered fake. I, I, let me just say, um, whatever. I, I take, t- take, it, take it for what it's worth. You know, I'm not, I, if, if you want to get on her for that, get on her for that. I'm just reporting the facts here, folks. I'm a fact reporter. Report facts. Now, here's a fact. Six in 10 Americans now believe that the federal government has too much power. One percentage point above the previous high recorded in September of 2010. 60% believe that now. 32% say the government has the right amount of power. And very little, very few, say it has too little power. Less government, less big government. That's a hallmark of conservatism, a hallmark of the the Republican platform and the Republican message and the conservative message. Yet, whenever that's talked about by conservatives or Republicans, the media tears them down as wanting to take, hurt the poor, hurt the, you know, the the, uh, elderly, blah, 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 blah. 60%. 
believe the federal government has too much power and is too big. Take it for what it's worth. Take it all for what it's worth, ladies and gentlemen. Reminder again, tomorrow on this show, Rand Paul will join us. And I wonder if Ted Cruz, well, he'll have to be finished because according to Susan Ferreccio, he's got to be finished uh, filibustering by noon tomorrow. We shall see. And we'll let you know where we stand with everything at the United Nations, everything with health care, and everything else that we'll be talking about right here on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax TV and radio. Thanks, everybody. The Steve Malsberg Show.